Is it possible to have complete perfection? It's a difficult question to answer, but we can continuously keep on improvising ourselves limitlessly. Because in order to arrive at the cherished goal, the destination, and if you need guidance, let us say you are lost in a city and you are visiting your friend who is a new location. And you keep calling your friend, my friend, I am here. And he asks you, where are you so I can give you the directions to my place. You have to look around and say, oh, here I am. I am in front of such and such a restaurant on a such and such a cross street. So we have to have some inkling of where we are going and where we are currently positioned. Do we recognize our plus and minuses in the current position that I am unable to tolerate and hence I am looking for a change, transformation, mutation. You see? Even this COVID, even simple thing like COVID virus, which has only two strands of DNA, very subtle, very refined perhaps, and it is defeating little by little the entire humanity, the arsenals of all the scientists. You try to attack one species of virus, next is mutated. You are attacking one the second one is muted. And now we have God knows how many mutations scientists have identified. Latest has been Omicron and to my surprise I am seeing another variant, 46th variant that is coming up in France, which is more virulent than Omicron. It spreads rapidly. So if a uh, simple thing like two strands of DNA in a virus can be so challenging. I think we are more complex beings and we have greater potential than virus to make many changes in ourselves until we become immutable as Lord Krishna says in Gita, that we arrive at a state of permanency where you don't anticipate any more changes because you are completely perfected. And that's the goal of our life. Is it possible to have complete perfection? It's a difficult question to answer, but we can continuously keep on improvising ourselves limitlessly, infinitely, because the nature of God is also, as we say, infinite. So there is no fixation, even in divinity, that this is the ultimate destination of God or ultimate form of God because as we change he also changes consciousness this is all about consciousness See? and I think today the scientists are more baffled than ever in trying to understand the consciousness you know there was a time in <clears throat> as we witness through the writings of Ramayana especially, not Mahabharata, Ramayana. And the great treatise on uh, Vasistha's uh, Yoga Sanhita. When you read those uh, chapters, it surprises us that they have gone so much in detail with our available present level of consciousness. What is superconsciousness? What is subconsciousness? What is dream state? What is angelic state? What is animalistic state? What is the stone's level of consciousness? Plant's level of consciousness? They have discussed all this in detail. And similarly, around the same epoch, the dialogue between Raja Janak and Astavakra, when we read that compilation, Astavakra Gita, we can see how consciousness is discussed there in detail, great detail. 
when we also see some of the slokas from ramayana the dialogue transpiring between mother sita lord rama and lakshman during their vanvas they are all discussing on the subject of consciousness and this is also i think a compile especially in lakshman gita so you can say in one way historically when we read the literature of that time of that epoch the consciousness was in fashion people were talking of consciousness we today we talk of fashion of external things clothes jewelries so many external things but those days it was the main main subject the internal level of consciousness our chit our chetana and if at all anything can change in ourselves in a positive way through our efforts yogic practices can bring about this change in consciousness that's the only purpose i think